Hostiles, 12 o'clock and 6 miles. What is this tack they're looking for anyway? It's some kind of weapon left by the ancients. The kind that decides who wins the war. Have Moloch's warriors been here before? I don't like the look of this. That was above and beyond. Isn't the Lambda site off-world, sir? I'd like to briefly take a moment and say thank you to everyone who has continued to join us over the Florida Maquis Patreon channel. The Holy Bible teaches us, rejoice always, pray without ceasing, give thanks in all circumstances, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. If you'd like to join us over there, it's only one U.S. dollar per month at the base level, and even less than that if you sign up for an entire year, and no matter what level you choose, it's fully refundable. First 90 days, no questions asked. What's the difference between YouTube and Patreon? At Patreon, we can take the gloves off. There are no sensors. We have, of course, the Patreon firewall, and then we also have Vimeo that we're partnering with, and that gives us one extra layer of protection where we can speak our minds and we can take advantage of rights that we used to enjoy in this country freely. would love to have you over there. There are hundreds of of exclusive videos never before seen here on YouTube. Please, if you have the ability, would love to have you over there. You won't regret it. God bless all of you, and thank you so much. There is a question nobody in the archaeological community is willing to ask, because by merely asking this question, you would be committing heresy against the quote-unquote accepted science god. What is that question? How could the Romans, the primitive Romans, have built such amazing structures that have lasted thousands of years? When in modern times, with all of our advanced materials and equipment and design, our structures only last a hundred years, maybe. If they're lucky... They aren't willing to ask the question because they would be drummed out of the inner circles. Most of the structures built by the Romans, this is the facade of the library at Ephesus, have been exposed to the elements this entire time, all of these millennia. And they have crumbled to some extent, but largely, many of them are intact and would be recognized by the people of Rome from thousands of years ago. It only takes an archaeological dig like this to prove that there once has been a civilization in this region. What do we see? The remains of walls and structures and rooms. Yet in Antarctica, such evidence is totally dismissed as wind, ice, rock, and snow. And that's just the way the wind blows. Literally, that's what they say, anyone who investigates it, anybody who shows the pictures, gets laughed at. Recently, the ancient city of Augusta in Turkey's Adana rose as the waters receded because of um, a dam that was allowed to create this. Now, the images... If you looked at them, if these were in Antarctica, people would say this is evidence of nothing. All you see is kind of a somewhat of a curve here, looks like just a jetty of rock here and some other shapes. 
You see, in Turkey, it's clearly evidence of the city of Augusta. And there are many other locations around the world like this as well, where they find some squares, some 90-degree angles. And, oh, it was a city, it was a settlement, and they rush in and uh, make all of their proclamations. But not in Antarctica. Now, in today's video, I'm going to show a couple of images that prove there was a settlement, some type of civilization, not just in one location in Antarctica, but in many. This image is a representation of how Roman roads were created. The first thing you have to do to build a road is dig a hole. They dug a giant trench, and they sifted things out, and they leveled it. And then they put in gravel, and then they put in cement, and then they leveled that. And then they brought in stones, and they leveled that. You see, time would take away all of these things that they did, but the hole would remain. The hole that they had to dig, the giant trench, that would remain. This is a better look at how deep that would have had to have been to create a road that's lasted this long now, without any further delay. Sometimes they scrub images, not realizing they left the shadows of what look like perfect building structures all over Antarctica. The first place I want to take you guys is way over here in this very kind of obscure mountain range. Now finding this was very difficult because something had to appear in just a certain way in just a certain shadow for it to make sense. If you zoom in on this location, all of a sudden, breaking through a ridge of snow, you see what look like building structures, pillars, and a platform. It's not entirely uncovered yet. But like we saw in Turkey, all it takes is receding waters. And what have they been telling us for years and years? Antarctica is melting. Millions and millions of gallons of fresh water dumping into the ocean from the snow and ice that's disappearing. And things are starting to emerge. Now, this is just one location. People say, well, maybe, maybe not. It looks a little fuzzy. I'm not really sure. Let's look at another location. All the way on the other side of the continent. And I will, down in the description, of course, give you these locations specifically so that you can download Google Earth Pro for yourself and go find them. This is in a glacier. When you zoom in very closely, you can see, once again, a platform. You can see pillars. You don't see anything else like it around. It looks like the remains of a building. Some type of a created structure. What it was, we don't know. But it's sure as heck not wind, ice, rock, and snow. Now, remember the, the Roman roads? Over a long period of time, the rock may have worn away the cement and gravel. But this is right near the coast. We've shown this before. I've referred to it almost as ancient Manhattan. Because what you're seeing here, these grooves, and look at how many 90 degree angles you see. Here, here, here. It looks like here, two roads that go right down to the sea. Same thing here. These valleys, these divots, these canals, these are what you would have had to have created to have made roads. This looks like this could have been a large port right down to the water where ships would have come in. It's very deep water right here for being so close. 
This easily could have been a settlement, and this does not look like a natural formation on a coast. This looks like a created port. Deep water port, and just off to the side here is a shallow water port that would have been used to take smaller boats, likely out to the deep water, to the larger boats to offload goods. This could have been some kind of a pier area. There are all sorts all over the continent of images like this. And guys, I don't care how you look at this. There is no way that what's sticking out through the snow here is some natural creation of the wind and the ice, and that's just how things happen. There's just no way. This looks like a wall of a building right here. You're looking at the top edge of it. You can see how it goes down to the ground here. And it's just being uncovered by the, the wind is blowing the snow, and this edge of the building has uncovered now. And you can see it. So, so far, that's four locations. Four specific locations, and there's many more that show this, but anyone who talks about it, of course, is largely called crazy. So all of these images from down here, when we compare them to what is known or accepted to be as known ancient settlements, they line up perfectly with construction techniques, with what we know about the Romans, with what we know about ancient technology and how they built things. The things they built in antiquity were built to last for hundreds, if not thousands of years. And we have proof of this. The things that we know of, of the Romans, all of the structures, have been exposed to the elements for thousands of years, and they still stand. How much more so would structures down there if they had been covered over and sealed in ice, not exposed to the elements. Anyone looking at this with a critical, logical mind would come to the conclusion that, of course, the fifth largest continent on the planet would very likely have had, at some point in its history, a native population because every other continent has one. Even Australia had the Aborigines. New Zealand. All of the islands in the Pacific. Asia. All had native populations, all but one. Science has also concluded that they're a part of Antarctica that was a rainforest with a mild climate with all sorts of animals. Why not people? And if there were people there, why would they have not evolved to build structures like this, structures like this, things that we're finding all over the planet? Why would Antarctica be an exception? If all it takes is for the waters to recede or ice to melt, to me, that's enough of a reason to believe. And I'll leave it there. Thank you, everyone, so much for the support on the channel. I appreciate it. God bless. Like, share, subscribe, and we will see everyone tonight on Twitch. Many people are aware of ancient Greek and ancient Roman architecture and what it looks like now. That as much of it is still standing is a testament. These things are thousands of years old. I mean, we build buildings these days, and if they last 100 years, we're impressed. These things have lasted for thousands and thousands of years. That was, of course, the, uh, the Roman Colosseum. This is the Pantheon, which is definitely something to see. Uh, this is, I believe, the Temple to Hephaestus. And as you can see, the columns are all still there.
This is, I want to pronounce this right, E-R-E-C-H-T-H-E-U-M, Erectium. And the columns are actually these uh, statues. And we can see this exact architecture in the modern world, in Washington, D.C. Now, what does this have to do with Antarctica? Well, there's this area called the Admiralty Mountains, and I'll zoom out here real quick just to give you an idea where it is. It's what we would call probably the uh, 7 o'clock region if the peninsula of Antarctica, pardon me, up here by South America is 12, you know, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Down here in the 7 o'clock region, there's this uh, area that kind of juts out, and we found a lot of different things here, a lot of different things, but there's one particular one that, to me, is just uh, beyond normal. It looks like what's uncovering here is you can see some columns, and you can see some kind of a platform here. And let me kind of zoom out that there's clearly some way into this ridge, into this, uh, I don't know what you'd call it, mountain. I'm wondering if this has just been covered in ice and snow and there's been some kind of an avalanche or collapse here that's starting to reveal this. Because you can see the 90 degree angles, you can see the platform, you can see the columns here. And you can see something here that is perfectly square. How you would get that in Antarctica, I just don't know. And above, there's another ridge that has the exact same, almost too perfect of an outline with what looks like might be some image, some construction or creation of some type of a face right here. you got the eyes, you've got the nose, you've got the shape. I mean, it's here. There's, very, there's something here. There's another entrance here, another entrance here. Um, this to me is like smoking gun kind of stuff. That there's a civ there was... A civilization down there at one time there still might be there might be investigations into this that they're not telling us about because of things that we've found to build things like this you would have to have a command of math science and geometry and I wanted to show something else that was very very close to this let's see if I can find it all right I've seen some perfect triangles in my day down here. This one is about as perfect as they get. You can't tell me. I have it outlined in red here to kind of accentuate it. Let me see if I can turn that off real quick just to show you this. That is literally a perfect equilateral isosceles triangle whatever created this what's causing it to be outlined like this in the snow I don't know but I know that nature doesn't do this it just it would be impossible and there's you know something up here it's very hard to make out very near to this pardon me <clears throat> That this is all occurring in the same region, to me, just can't possibly be all a coincidence. Here is the one final thing I wanted to show. That looks like it may be some kind of a creation. I'm not sure. But the way the camera angle is on this, you can't really tell, but these angles, right, this specific... Pardon me, this specific angle right here is nearly perfect. And we've shown this in other places too. This isn't the only place. These are the just the three I wanted to talk about today. The things that we see in ancient Greece, the things that we see in ancient Rome, we're starting to see uncover because of the massive melt in Antarctica. And I think the next 50 to 60 years is going to be one of the most exciting times for this continent and for discovery. We may have a new age 
of Discovery coming up. Would like to briefly take a moment and say thank you to everyone who has continued to join us over the Florida Maquis Patreon channel. The Holy Bible teaches us, Rejoice always, pray without ceasing, give thanks in all circumstances, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. If you'd like to join us over there, it's only one U.S. dollar per month at the base level, and even less than that if you sign up for an entire year, and no matter what level you choose, it's fully refundable. First 90 days, no questions asked. What's the difference between YouTube and Patreon? At Patreon, we can take the gloves off. There are no censors. We have, of course, the Patreon firewall, and then we also have Vimeo that we're partnering with, and that gives us one extra layer of protection where we can speak our minds and we can take advantage of rights that we used to enjoy in this country freely. Would love to have you over there. There are hundreds of exclusive videos never before seen here on YouTube. Please, if you have the ability, would love to have you over there. You won't regret it. God bless all of you, and thank you so much. Hot time, 12 o'clock and 6 miles. What is this tack they're looking for anyway? It's some kind of weapon left by the ancients. The kind that decides who wins the war. Have Moloch's warriors been here before? 